Hi, my name is Dave, and today I'm going to show you two very interesting and rather strange Sands and Streif telescopes. These scopes date from the 1950s, early 1960s, at the youngest. Um, and, you know, they're, they're vintage scopes, and they are odd. They are really, really weird scopes. Wait until you see. This telescope is so simple, uh, it's almost silly. It's very, you know, there's nothing to it. Altitude, azimuth, that's it. That's all you've got. There are some wrinkles. Well, there is one more thing down here, some uh, screws that you can use to balance the scope. Okay, similar to the other scope. Let's just put it there to give it, I think that's gonna be real good balance. This thing is uh, fairly unnecessary. You can lock it down if you want to, or tighten the friction. Same thing here, pretty unnecessary. You don't even use those things at all. Uh, this telescope almost certainly would have been sold with one of these. This is an image erecting prism so that you can use it as a, a spotting scope, really. Um, I'm not sure if they would have intended, or if they would sold it, have sold it for use as an astronomical telescope, because it doesn't work perfectly, at least. You can't go all the way to the zenith with this telescope. You can get to within maybe 15, 20 degrees of the zenith, but you're never going to be able to look at something that's straight up. A lot of telescopes of this design have a fork that's tilted back so that you can look straight up like that. Let's take a close look at this scope. One thing in particular I want you to note about this scope is this focuser. That is very unusual to have a single focuser on the side like that. Those are the locking screws there. It also has a detachable finder. This is what it looks like once you've got it all set up. Notice that it's a pretty smooth motion. I had this out, I was using it last night, and it's very easy to use, very convenient. Uh, it tracks, I mean, you have to push it, but it will track pretty accurately if you've got this well polar aligned, if you want to call it that. This is the charming adjustment knob. It reminds me of a gear shift knob from a 53 Chevy. There's that delightful finder mount. Interesting little setting circle kind of a thing. That's the altitude lock. And the declination lock. Or I should say azimuth lock. All right, so if you're going to pull or align this scope, set this up for tracking and so forth, first thing you're going to have to do is figure out where this is, figure out where that is. This thing, this little, that little piece right there, you'll lose that in about two minutes. Uh, anyway, that, you set this up and you turn this axis so that this is pointed due north and south, say like that, lock it down, maybe Put that in your pocket or a safe deposit box or someplace where you don't lose it. Um, then you're going to set this the angle. Now the instructions in the manual are not at all clear. As a matter of fact, very very confusing. But it's really very straightforward to do this. All you have to do is set this.
to 40 degrees, which is my latitude, set it to your latitude right there, lock it down, loosen this, tilt this until this is level. That's going to be about there. Now, that's going to be approximately 40 degrees. You have a 40 degree angle here and 40 degree angle there. Latitude, my particular case. And that'll, uh, that'll get you to where you want to be. The, <laughs> the instructions in the manual are so confusing as to be unintelligible. Uh, anyway, that's how you do that. And that'll be, it doesn't really have to be that close anyway. As long as you're somewhere near close, you're going to get pretty decent tracking if you're within maybe 10 degrees of, uh, of the pole. You're going to be fine for visual use and for easy hand tracking. You're going to have to be tweaking it once in a while anyway, so it's not a big deal. But uh, <laughs> it's quite entertaining that they put this all this complicated stuff on here and the, the instructions are so minimal as to be completely useless or they're even downright wrong here's a close-up of your little dial pointer this thing that pointer is always going to stay where the uh, where the yoke is pointed and then you just use this as a protractor to figure out your angle that's all there is to it Now you're at 90 degrees with respect to this thing. Now I'm at uh, 40 degrees, which is the tilt of this thing with respect to the surface of the Earth. So that's a, uh, you know, that's uh, polar aligned right there for, for me, for 40 degrees latitude. Let's take a close look at this mount. Take this a little so you can have a closer look. We also see that little thing that goes in there. Very easy to lose that piece. It's kind of a capstan bolt. So it's going on there. This is similar, but this one is screwed in. Oops. I want to compare that with the Sands and Streif Mystery Scope. Now, um, you may not be able to see it, but I've, I've measured these uh, carefully, and these castings are almost identical. Now, let me show you a couple more details about this. The way this thing tilts is controllable. You can adjust. Just, whoops. <laughs> How long do you think that would last? <laughs> How long do you think that would hang around? You can adjust the amount of tilt that you're allowed to have here. There's a, a screw down here. If you tighten that up, now it only allows for a certain amount of latitude adjustment change that this is a uh, this cam device here it's locked over here so you can't go any further than that but in this direction it's a kind of a cam thing and you can change it so that it can go all the way back I'm not sure how far it will go that's about the extent but it'll go all the way back like so. How's that for strange and interesting? <laughs> Boy, that is one bizarre little mount. The finder for this scope is a lot like a Swift finder. Uh, a Swift telescope. I've got a video for one of those, so I'll leave a link below. It's But it's much smaller. <clears throat> so it's the same basic idea though you have a kind of a cam here in the front I'm not sure if you can see that but when you turn this it makes it go this way left and right 
then you lock it down with that. This one here in the back requires some very tiny, tiny little fingers to be able to operate that. You can adjust it up and down with that and then tighten it down with that. So that's the basic idea of that. Let's take a look at the packing strategy for this scope. Here are the legs. This is the only reasonable way I could figure out to pack that scope in there. So I had to take the dew shield off, slide it over here. This has actually got a pad built in over here that looks like it's designed to hold that. And this is clearly, there's a piece of green padding here that's clearly there to protect the finder scope. So anyway, that's the packing strategy that I figured out. I'm pretty sure that's right. So now the scope comes out. You're gonna have to put the dew shield on, of course. Here are a couple of catalogs. These are from the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, Sands and Streif. You can see over here we have this one here is the number 601 telescope. That's the telescope that uh, I have with the tilted axis and so forth. There is another a similar telescope on an equatorial mount that looks a whole lot like a Swift. Uh, very, very reminiscent. Actually, it would have been a precursor to the Swift, I believe. Anyway, this one, uh, as you can see, looks like that. Now, that's a model 601. A couple of years later, they come out with a different model 601. This is still Sands and Streif. And, and look, it's quite different. The model, the, the, uh, the bearing is different. Everything's different. It's got a slow motion here, etc., etc. Very, very interesting. Now, to make things even more interesting, here is a close-up of that Sands and Streif. Notice that it's got the tilted kind of a fork mount. This one, this is a scope that is owned by Charlie B on Cloudy Nights. Charlie was kind enough to let me use his photographs. Look at this unusual scope. This has got to be almost a clone of the Sands and Streif uh, earlier model, but it's got right ascension, declination, uh, limited declination, but it's a true right ascension and declination, slow motions, and it's on a tilted kind of a, a fork mount like that. So let's compare these three things just to put them in all on the same page. Here's the old Sands and Streif, unknown model. We don't know what it is, but we do know it's a Sands and Streif. Here's the 601, the one that I've been showing you predominantly in this video. And here Char here's Charlie B's telescope. What an interesting telescope. Fascinating. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Sands and Streif telescopes from the late 1950s. Thank you for watching.